So we'll do a simple example. Bouncing ball. And the reason I want to have a simple example is because uh, there is some terminology, some things about how to simulate a, a, a system like this, which is kind of important. Unless you have the intuition, it's difficult to do a more complicated system. In fact, even the simplest walker I'll be talking about is going to be fairly complicated. So I just want to make it first introduce this idea with a simple example, with something which you've seen before. So what I talk about is, let's not even think of project as, let's just think of taking a ball and dropping it on a floor. So we know that the ball will hit the floor with some velocity, let's say, uh, let's define the axis Y upwards. So it hits the floor with a velocity and the notation I'll be using here is, well, same as before, but for the events, I need to define something slightly different because what happens here is there's a velocity for the ball just before it hits the floor. I'll call that Y dot, it's a velocity with a negative sign saying it's before the collision. And then once it hits the floor, it springs back. So it jumps up with the velocity Y dot positive, just indicating that that positive means after that event or after that collision. So what we have here is free fall, and then we have a bounce. Okay, so free fall. Let me just call it fall, bounce, fall, bounce. So it just keeps happening, right? Uh, the way we need to go from fall to bounce is a decision you need to make in your simulation, right? In a simulator like Mujoko, you it will do that for you. So the physics is hidden from you. But if you want to write your code yourself in Python, then you need to figure out when that incident occurs. And in this case, this will occur when you detect ground. So how do you define detection of ground? Well, if you think that the ground is at y equals zero, then at y equals zero, you should say, I have detected the ground. Then I will change the equations from falling free fall to that of bounce. Then I need to make again a decision from bounce to fall, what, what will go here and so on, right? So these decisions have to be made by yourself. If you're writing your own simulation, if you're using Mojoko, you don't need to worry about that. So the way we will simulate this, and really this part is focused on simulations more than uh, this thing, because I think you know about how to write equations for this is to actually uh, think of what is the main unit, which we, if we repeat, keep repeating, then we will get a successful simulation. So in this case, you can see from that uh, sort of equation is that you have a fall and a bounce and then take off. This is a one unit. So if you can simulate one unit to start from fall, bounce back to there, then we can just keep repeating that and that will help us to simulate a bouncing ball, keep bouncing. Okay, so once we have identified these units, we what we do is we write the equations. Okay, we are only doing fall under gravity. So the equation is y double dot equals minus g, right? That is, assume there's no drag force, just falling under gravity. Uh, after, so once the ball hits the ground, there will be a condition for bounce. And I'll write that down. That will be based on uh, Newton's law of restitution. So the bounce is simply given by minus e equals y dot positive divided by y dot negative, which is saying that the velocity after collision is minus e times velocity before collisions. After collision. 
velocity P4 collision and then E is the coefficient of restitution. And so we know that the coefficient of restitution is, well, it's normally never equal to one because all systems are dissipative. And so velocity after impact is always less than the velocity before impact, of course, this right sign. Uh, if it was greater than one, then you would have something is adding energy to the system, which is not true. Okay, so this is uh, the equation for bounds. Then we also need to figure out how will we detect ground? Well, we detect ground when y equals zero or the height is zero. Now you could have a bounce somewhere else if you want to bounce at a height of one meter, like on a, on a table, then you just put that y, whatever you want it. Okay, so once we have, there's, there's nothing which goes here because the bounce to fall, the, the bounce to going up, there is no real, uh, there's no real trigger to, to get that. It's just instantaneous. If there was something happening, like maybe that the, there was uh, some cushionness in the ground or there's something else inside the interaction with the ground and maybe the ground, the ball sticks on the ground and something else happens, then you have to model that, that question mark. But here we don't really need this, there's nothing here. Okay, sometimes you have something, sometimes you don't have anything. So we just need those three things, which is y equals zero, equations for fall, equation for bounds. Now, before I go and show you how to do this in uh, simulation, uh, this is something which is very different from what we have done so far conceptually. So when we go from pre-fall to hitting the ground, we did not know a priori when the bounce will take place, but everything we have done so far relies on simulating or integrating the equations for to a particular time. So for example, the projectile, it just went for five seconds or 10 seconds or 20 seconds. But for this case, when the ball is dropped, depending on the height of the ball, either the ball will hit the floor at one second or 1.1 second, 1.2 seconds. We do not know that in advance. So we need to give the integrator, that's whatever does the Euler or Runge Kutta, the ability to detect that and stop the integration. So once the ball hits the ground, it needs to stop the integration. We would know the velocity at that instant. Once you know the velocity, we'll apply the coefficient of restitution, compute the velocity in upward direction. Once you have the velocity of upward direction, we we'll continue integration, so the ball will go up, again come down. Moment, it's about to hit the ground again, we we'll stop the integration and just keep doing that, right? So there is this thing which I want to understand is not straightforward. It turns out that the integrator we're going to use, it's called solve IVP, has a capability to you can tell it that stop the integration when certain something happens, like in this case, y equals zero. And I'll show you how to do that. Uh, so once that integrator is clubbed with this equation, it will actually stop at the right time. Then we'll change the equations and keep going. So the only thing I want to mention here before I show you uh, code is that we have we need to integrate pre-fall equations till y equals zero, right? And so this is done using a, a integrator called solve IVP. Okay, so solve IVP. Uh, you basically define the right hand side, the time, the method if you want. But then there is thing called event, called events. This is where you specify that you need to return Y. In this case, Y, because Y is when you're going to decide. It's switch. So you need to return Y. If you want to, yeah, I'll just return y, but if you want to return 
uh, let's say you want to detect collision at height equals five, then you put y minus five, so y minus h, whatever you want. And so this one basically gives you uh, the solution. And then solution actually is a structure. It, it, it will have a variable called p, which is the time. It'll have a variable called i, y, which is the state. Okay. And this will be more clear in the when I show you the animation and the simulation. So that's the key thing that is you need to use this integrator with the special capabilities. But then once you have this, then it's just a matter of using the right equations at the right time. Okay, so I'll show you an animation of first I'll show you animation, and then you can judge if it looks realistic. Okay, so that's done just by using those two equations I talked about and using that integrator. Uh, so that's showing the y and the y dot. Okay, so what's there here? I have defined a coefficient restriction of 0.9 uh, and I can change that whenever I want. I actually have this code which can actually do a projectile motion if you want. I've not set it to do that, but if you want, you can do it and you can also add in a drag force. Okay, so as I said, the base main unit is one bounce and that should simulate two things. One is free fall, detect collision, and then bounce. So here I use, so once I have Z zero, which is the state X, Y. So I have, as I said, it's a projectile. So it'll have X, X dot, Y, Y dot. And we are using part of it here. So once you have the state, I go to solve IVP, which gives our right-hand side, the time, the Z zero initial state, the method, and then this thing called events, okay, which is the most important thing, which tells it when to stop. So I'll show you what events look like. It is defined right below it. So it basically takes a state and then returns Y, which is the height, which is the third variable. So the zero, one, two, second variable per. Once it returns that, I need to tell it a few more things. I need to tell it to stop. That is defined by a variable called terminal in contact. Contact, by the way, is the function. Now, this might be sort of strange to you, just be used to it. It's like, that's how Python wants it. Once you define the function, you can define a variable with that function. Uh, it's like a structure if you know structures. So you want to stop the integration is told by true. If you say pause, it'll just keep integrating that. It'll detect that, but it'll just go. The direction is interesting. So maybe you want to detect collision when it hits the ground, but if there's a ceiling and when it goes and hits the ceiling, maybe you do not want to detect the ceiling, right? So you can do that by setting the direction. The direction is how the Y value is changing. So if the Y value is, is decreasing, it's negative one, if it's increasing, it's positive one. So this telling is that if you are going down, detect collision, if it's going up, do not detect collision because uh, direction is set to negative one, not positive one. Uh, you can set it to here. It doesn't really matter. Uh, it won't change until you put zero. Okay, so that's basically sets up my stage for the projectile motion or the fall free fall. This just saves the data. As I said, sol.y has all the data. I saved it in the variable z for later animation. I take the velocity in the y direction. So it's third in the. You see it from here. See here it's like this. So it's zero, one, two, three, third index. And then I multiply it E and then I save that. So that's Y dot negative is here. Y dot positive is there. And then I just return. So that's my one unit. Once I have that one unit, uh, this is just animation routine. And then go through that. The projectile is the equation of projectile motion. Remember, I added drag force. You don't have to worry about drag. I only need a y equals minus here. So you can put zero, zero, minus, uh, sorry, zero, zero, y dot, and minus two. Okay, and so that's my loop. I have set the velocity to be 10. It, it falls from a height of zero, but I can change that to fall from four or two. Okay. 
and it's just a while loop which runs for some time. It, this could loop could also be as a number of bounces, so five bounces or six bounces, but I just decided to run for some time. And then let me wait and plot, so control shift P. Now this is, the speed is, it may not look realistic because the speed is not right, but you can make it realistic by playing with the pause between frames. And so it will be realistic. 